Mr. Beast, $500 donation. Holy Dude, I just slandered you on TikTok. I'm literally late to stream because I was making fun of Mr. Beast on TikTok. That's crazy. And he gave me $500. <laughs> Dude, imagine he saw the video first. I would have been broke. Holy Yo, W's in chat because that was lucky. Yo, W's in chat for Mr. Bean. Why? Because he's making me a rich man. How awkward was it being in the same room as people you f***ed on in the past? Who we talking about, Logan Paul? <laughs> yeah, I was in a room with Logan Paul. It came up too. Because like, I'm not the type of guy to sit there and be like, dude, like, what the f What's up, brother? Yeah. But I will say, he was quite cool about it. Uh, so anyway, sorry about the disappearing act. But you guys might have seen on Twitter, I had a good reason because I was part of what people are calling the Zoomer version of Ellen DeGeneres' Oscars picture. <laughs> or another way to phrase it, a chump check to see how much of a loser you are. Because if you can name more than 30 people, you got to go outside. You got to go outside. I personally, before I was hanging out with these people, probably could go 40 for 50. And I'm not proud of that fact. I'm not proud of that. I'll be real. I knew mo uh, most everyone except for some of the foreign language people. You look photoshopped in. No, I don't. No, I don't. I just look fucking good and also tall as shit. And I did that on purpose. I, I, I was like, wherever Lily Pichu's going, I'm there. I'll look big as shit next to Lily Pichu, Faze Rug, and, and Lexi Rivera. You kidding me? Dream blunt rotation. Yeah, so there's a lot of fucking huge ass names here, right? People will recognize in this, in this chat, right? Like you guys all recognize, I'm sure, Schlatt. Over there in the back, if you didn't see him. Charlie, I don't know why the hell he's way back there, because he's tall as fuck. I guess that's why. So a lot of big-ass uh, names that you guys would recognize. And then a lot of big-ass names that, like, people around the world would recognize. Like, this dude named Carries from India. Let me show you guys his channel real quick. This guy has 42 million, million subscribers. And he averages about 40, 30 million views a video. He is huge bots no india is just the biggest country in the world by population ludwig x beta squad let me tell you the beta squad members were cool chunks might be the funniest youtuber in this picture i know that's a hot take because there's a lot of funny people in this picture chunks pound for pound ignore that he's funny i what i'm trying to say is he's funny oh okay thank you the five gifted ginger b Let's focus on that. I literally didn't mean that. I literally didn't mean that. I mean, that's a phrase. It's a fucking American phrase. <sighs> Big man in the club, call me the hero. Sipping hot cum at Cafe Nero. Anyway, I legally, and I mean this, I legally cannot tell you what happened in the video. Like, I literally had to sign an NDA to not leak it. Seriously. And I tried to dodge. I want you to know, if you know me, I tried scamming Mr. Beast. 100%. Because they sent the NDA and everybody signed like a, it was like a DocuSign. Ding, 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 ding. I won't say anything. Ding, 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 ding. I, and I didn't sign it. All right. One of the people running the event was like, Lodi, can you sign this? I was like, sure. Fucking my ass. I didn't sign shit. I get to the event live. They have it fucking printed out. They make me sign physical copy. And then I, I go, oh, like, oh, oh, dude, I'll sign a fake name. I've done that before against Mr. Beast. They watched me. They fucking hawked me, watched me sign. Okay, all right, you got me. My bad. <laughs> I was just joking around. I was just having, I was just, it was just jokes. It was just jokes. Chill. However, I did ask. I can say I didn't leave empty handed. So, guys. Mark this date down, July 13th. I'm showing up to this stream fucking suit and tie. I'm showing up correct because July 13th, not only are we going to watch the Mr. Beast video the minute it comes out, because I swear to God, it probably is the best Mr. Beast video ever, but I'm also going to show you what's inside of this briefcase. July 13th. Until July 13th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So Logan Paul. Okay. <laughs> now look, I, I am not Mogul Mail. Obviously, that's a different guy. However, Mogul Mail has made a couple videos about Logan Paul. Like a couple. And, you know, spent a lot of time with this guy, Logan. Spent a lot of time with him. Because there, there wasn't, you know, there's a good chunk of us, but you end up talking intimately. So I was talking to Logan, whatever. And then at a certain point, he goes, by the way, man, what do you do? Like, no offense, I just don't know what you do. And, like, I don't get offended by that because like candidly I find out about YouTubers with like 10, 15, 20 million subscribers like every month. You know what I mean? So I'm like yeah, you know, I, I do like the streaming stuff. He's like streaming stuff. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. And then I was like yeah, and I do some commentary stuff too. And he's like oh, commentary. Like what's that? And then I'm like Logan, let me stop right there. I've made some videos about you. And he goes 
oh, okay. I'm like, I don't think you would like them. I was quite critical <laughs> of some things you've done. And then he's like, you know what? I talked to Charlie. I don't even think, I think he called him critical. He's like, I talked to critical. And it's fine. I get it. Which I was like, you know what? I actually like how he handled that. You know what? That He handled that quite well, I thought. Because it could have gone a different way. That for sure could have gone a different route. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was respectful. I think, look, I, ultimately, I think he understands. He's a public figure. He does something he can get publicly figured on. Uh, that's not the right phrasing, but you get what I mean. Mr. Beast, don't know wall? Nah, I saw his $500. He just said double the title. If he typed in chat, just know, Jimmy, you have to type through donations. By the way, actually, can I say something real quick? And maybe this is controversial, but fuck Mr. Beast. High key. Because, like, I, I don't know if I changed or if he changed, but one of us changed, and I'm not happy about it. Because I did this Mr. Beast video, right? Not only do I not fly back direct, I fly back with one stop on Southwest. Now, I'm not complaining a free flight is a free flight, but, man, back in the day, he used to fucking shh shove out private jets left and right what happened to the pjs i know this comes off as a bit privileged to say why didn't i get a private jet but like once you're fine once you fly private on mr beast dime once you you start kind of expecting things you know what i mean and i and, and you know what i tried to rationalize i was like ludwig you are being insane right now you got a free flight and you got to do a mr beast video what more could you honestly ask for that's already fucking amazing Let's just be happy with what we have. And then I find out Kai Sinek gets a private jet to the goddamn shoot. I just wasn't big enough. I fell off. What happened? I don't know if you guys saw. I tweeted this out. Emergency. If anyone lives or works near or close to the Denver airport who can help me in the next hour, I need you. I'll pay your ass a thousand straight up. Bless. And this is because yesterday was actually a scary day. Because yesterday, when I was flying back on my Southwest one-stop flight, it was so early in the morning, my flight, that I got maybe three hours of sleep. And I fell asleep on the plane. Not weird at all to do. I fell asleep on the plane. And only when I got off my second flight did I realize I had traveled with my father ring I lost my dad's ring on the flight I spent literally the entire day trying to track it down and it sucks because I didn't realize that I lost it until I got off the last flight and I was in the the taxi home from the airport and like if you don't know like I only have two heirlooms for my dad who died tragically of alcoholism one is his watch and two the one that I wear more often is his ring it's like this gold ring that's kind of like a slot machine that you can go fring, and, and there's like the jewels line up. I, I recognize that I lost it. And so I start to do like some detective work and I see where I stopped and I track the plane because planes are very trackable. I track the exact plane and I see where it flew to next. And I'm like, okay, it went all the way to like California and then it was going to Denver. And I saw that I was landing in Denver. That's why I tweeted this out is because I knew the plane was landing in the next hour and I wanted somebody who could go to the airport and get there when the plane landed to see if it was on the plane. Because like the way it works when you, when you lose something is like you can fill out a form, you know what I mean? And you can be like hey i lost this item and if they find it they find it but like if you guys have ever tried like lost and found through like the normal modes like it's hit or miss man right and especially if it's like jewelry or something a lot of the times it can be a lot easier for somebody who sees it to like keep it than to like be honest and give it back and i i like i didn't want to just you know submit a form and be like all right now i'll pray to god for my father's ring I, that felt like bad you know so anyway i did exactly that and shout out to the lud buds because you guys went crazy like i kept that tweet up for maybe 10 minutes and in 10 minutes i had like 30 people who were like i live half an hour from the airport i live 20 minutes to the airport and i had one dude who i'll shout out they're, they're i don't think it's too crazy to shout them out because i think they're like somewhat public you know what i mean but i had one dude who's like uh uh his name's logic and he he said my best friend is like right next to denver uh this dude i'll, I'll shout i don't know if this is I feel like it's chill. I'm gonna shout out. Not lo not the logic. Logical solutions. This guy right here. Shout out this dude right here. Because he replied to my tweet in like, honestly, five minutes. And he's like, my best friend, seven minutes from the airport. I got his best friend's number and I called him and like, we had hatched out like a fucking plan. Like it was, it was actually crazy. Within like 15 minutes of me posting that tweet, we had that guy driving to the airport. I found the gate right next to the gate that the plane that I was on was landing at. And I bought him a flight for that plane and so he was able to go through security you know park and and get in and get to the front counter before that plane left because if you know like plane turnaround times are quick because like they land and they leave within like half hour 45 max you know so we were able to get in that window and we got in there and he talked to the person at the gate and we got them to search the plane for 10 fucking minutes to find the ring the only issue is that the ring wasn't on the plane
like she checked it she actually went as thorough as you can and she scoped it up and down and it just wasn't there and i know as a fact that it wasn't on my hand because i had taken a video on the flight of my left hand and it wasn't on my finger and i know as a fact that when i left the hotel from the beast shoot that it was on my finger and so i spent literally yesterday just like you can ask cutie but i, I would take a nap because i was like tired and shit but also like i didn't want to do anything and i'd be i'd be so sad when i woke up because the first thing i would do when i wake up is remember that i lost my ring and in like a last act of desperation, I went through all my shit. I was like, maybe I forgot the ring somewhere. I looked, I got like from the shoot a bunch of merch. And one of the merch items I got was a Mark Rober hoodie. And in the front pocket of the hoodie was my dad's fucking ring. <laughs> Which is so fucking embarrassing. <laughs> It's so embarrassing. And the crazy thing is the fact that it was still in there. Because like, no, like you guys might be thinking like you're dumb because I took off the ring. I took off the ring, I remember, on the first flight. So that means for the next five hours, the ring stayed in like a, like a, you know, like one of them sweatshirt pockets. And I used that sweatshirt to like sit on, to lie my head down on. I threw it in like the front holder. Like I was using that shit like a rag doll. I cannot believe it stayed in that entire time. Cause I think I probably put it in there probably after maybe during the first flight or, or during security or some point, but I put it in there early. So I can't, I can't believe that it stayed in. And then, and so, <laughs> so anyway, I told, there's a couple people who helped me out with this. There's a couple of who helped me out and I texted him. I was like, dude, I found the ring. And they're both like, oh my God, where was it? And I, and I didn't answer. I don't know Wald. Cause like, what am I going to say? Oh, I had it the whole time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just straight up had it the whole time. So anyway, that was a waste of time for all of us. I did. I paid the dude a thousand bucks, even though like the ring wasn't found. I was still like, man, they took the time out of their day and I, I paid him. I paid him a rack. They didn't even know that it was a rack. They were like, yo, can you pay me back for the parking? Cause the parking was 50 bucks. And I was like, sure. And then I sent them a thousand bucks instead. I basically kind of scammed myself out of a thousand bucks, but it was kind of worth it. Cause you know, I wanted to feel like I was doing all I could do. I guess it wasn't worth it in the sense that I could have just looked through my fucking pockets and I would have found it, but... Show the ring? Nah, man. I keep that shit locked up now. I keep that shit locked. I am not letting that shit go. But anyway, guys, again, the video comes out July 13th. We're going to open that briefcase then. And I promise you guys, not only is the video crazy, I, I shouldn't say anymore. I shouldn't say anymore. It, just know it's fucking crazy. Do you know what's inside that briefcase? Of course I do. Of course I do. Yes. Yes, I do. It's, it's heavy. I can't say anymore. I literally can't say anymore. I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get in fucking trouble. I can't say anymore. I can't say anymore. Kai Sinat duplicate. Dude, my fucking nightmares come true. My fucking nightmares tr come true. So Kai was in that, Kai was in that, uh, that shoot with me, right? And I tell Kyle, I was like, dude, I watched a shit ton of the Elden Ring stream. It was fucking great. And he's like, dude, after I finished, I saw that you did this a couple years ago. And in the back of my mind, secretly, I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. Thank God, because everyone thinks I'm just biting your fucking shit. I did it two years ago. Two years ago. Literally. Literally. When the game came out two years ago and I'm the clone? How? How does this keep happening to me? Everyone's a damn size queen, man. I was rolling my R's before Jinxie. I, I was doing marathon streams before Kai. And I was saying the shit PewDiePie. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding.